Hey everyone, welcome to News Dump, and uh, it's been a very busy week for the entertainment industry with lots of new announcements, trailers, news, and some ridiculous crap for good measure. So let's not waste any time here and just dive into everything that stood out to us this week, starting with the news that if you've been to Disney's new Star Wars land, Galaxy's Edge, in either Southern California, or if you're planning a trip to the recently opened version in Orlando, which I guess opened oh, to, today cool. when we film this, uh, you should probably be aware of the fact that the TSA... It's apparently cracking down on some of the souvenirs that you might want to bring back on your flight home. This is so lame. Mm -hmm. So since the entire franchise is literally about wars across a fantasy universe in the stars, there are obviously weapons involved. Mm -hmm. And you could safely assume that fans of this franchise might want to bring home some replicas from their visit to Galaxy's Edge. Luckily, your lightsabers are fine mm. for now. But the TSA has actually put out two official responses relating to some items from the theme park, saying that these items are banned from being transported in flight or through an airport in your carry-on luggage, as well as your checked baggage. Yeah. Uh, Which is weird, because you can carry actual weapons in your checked baggage. Yeah, you can carry a gun as long as you, you know... Declare. Fill out the right forms. Mm -hmm. As long as you're not a weirdo about it, you can bring a gun most places. Now, the items in question here the not real weapons, are exclusive commemorative soda bottles from Coca-Cola that are available in the park and are shaped like thermal detonators. A not real weapon. Yeah, fictional weapon. And sure, these definitely, they just look like Christmas ornaments. Christmas honestly. is banned. And we would assume that the most actual explosive devices aren't painted to look like Coca-Cola or Sprite logos, but the TSA has made it clear that you cannot bring these to an airport. This all got started a few days back when replicas uh, were brought to the TSA's attention when someone sent them a tweet with the photo of the items asking if they could be packed into a suitcase. And the TSA replied back with, Replica and inert explosives aren't allowed in either carry-on or checked bags. And obviously that reply went a bit viral with the basic response from people online being, Lame. Very, very lame. Okay, but what if you just took the cap off? Doing that would just leave you with a plastic ball, right? Well... Even that's not enough to bypass their regulations. Those damn regulations. Because earlier this week, they clarified their original stance by adding, even with a normal bottle clap, this item is still considered a replica and is not allowed in carry-on or check bags. If our officers discover a replica item during screening and believe it's real, the item will be treated as such until advised otherwise by law enforcement. So there will, I, We will shut down this airport if we see a goddamn Star Wars Coca-Cola bottle. By God, it's a thermal detonator! Whoa! <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, yeah, no balls in your bags. Got it. Yeah. Uh, at the very least, we're pretty sure that if law enforcement got involved, there wouldn't be much that they could do. But it's still going to cause you a massive headache, and it could force you to miss your flight. It's just not worth it. Sorry, sir, I'm a dork. Yeah, you, one, one second you're trying to bring home a cool bottle you got at a theme park to, like, you know, show your friends. Put it up the on next, the desk. The next minute, they're fucking elbows deep in your anus. Mm -hmm. It's just not worth what it. What else you got up there? How many lightsabers yeah. can you fit? On the other hand, there's nothing stopping you or anyone else from just tossing it in your bag, hoping for the best and claiming ignorance if you do get caught with it, since it's literally just a soda bottle. I've gotten some crazy things accidentally smuggled onto airplanes. Mm -hmm. So There are already plenty of outspoken people online that have chimed in to let everyone know that they've already successfully smuggled these things home in their luggage because the park's been open in at least Southern yeah. California for months. Yeah. And mostly it was because they had no idea it was against the rules because why would it be? And it... You know, we are, we were all floating by with yeah. ignorance until that narc on Twitter. Thanks, narc. Just had to point out these bottles to the TSA. Uh, teacher, is it okay if we bring these these fake grenades? Always one kid in the class it has to ruin it for everyone. Yeah, it, that person potentially ruined uh, you know gleeful ignorance that everyone else could have used as an and, excuse and ruined Christmas because. You're not going to be able to hang those yeah. on your tree. Anymore. Hello, TSA. I've got these like shiny uh, metallic balls that I'd like to transport. Nope. No, absolutely, absolutely not. not. Those are actually more dangerous because if you break them, they could be used to cut things. Right, yeah, you could you could do some real terrorism with the, an ornament. Uh, well, our, our tip would be if you're going to do this, just empty out the, the soda bottle and then you put it in a box and then you write not a bomb on the box. Yeah. It's the easiest way to let the TSA know when they go through your bag that it yeah. is not a bomb. And to ensure that they don't, like, damage the, the bottle cap, you should, like, tape some, like wires to the cap. Yeah, make so, sure it stays on. So that they can, you know, if they need to open it, they pull the wires, not the, <laughs> the cap. Yeah. And, you know, 
you know, you're down there going through people's bags. You lose track of what time of day it is. Put a clock on it. Yeah, and you don't want to get to get crushed in your bag. So you fill it with like sand or just like the heaviest possible <laughs> thing. Give it some weight. Yeah. So that it's not going to get crushed in your luggage. Uh, these Life are all hacks. Terrible ideas. Don't listen to us. <laughs> Speaking of Disney, though. Oh, God. They just had their big D23 convention down in San Diego last weekend. And we know it's been a few days. You already know. Yes. But here's a quick rundown of what was announced and shown during the event. Game of Thrones star Kit Harington has officially joined the MCU and will be appearing in The Eternals alongside Angelina Jolie, Salma Hayek, and Kumail Nanjiani, who already looks like he's a few months into his superhero workout regimen. He is absolutely jacked. I <laughs> yeah. am shocked. Yeah, it's uh, quite the transformation. This is going to absolutely ruin the final season of Silicon Valley because I'm just going to be like, the fuck what did you the say to fuck? me? <laughs> No, uh, you're, no, you're buying this app. Yeah. You're right, sir. This is like when Jeff Bezos got jacked. So, yeah. Whoa, hey, I didn't mean anything by it. I, I, I didn't mean it when I called you a dork back yeah. then. Uh, Black Panther 2 received an official release date of May 2022, and Marvel also announced two new series exclusively for Disney+. Plus: She-Hulk and Ms. Marvel. Mm -hmm. She's single, boys. Uh, they also released a trailer for the live-action remake of Lady and the Tramp, which, much like The Lion King, continued the studio's tradition of stripping away all of the magic that made their original animated films worthwhile and memorable. The, digi the Disney magic is, is gone. This is so dumb. Uh, the one difference here is that Lady and the Tramp, it won't be released theatrically. They know it'll bomb. Uh, it's instead going straight to the streaming service Disney Plus as an exclusive. Yeah, it's like how all the Air Bud sequels were just straight to VHS. Yeah. Uh, what I, I want to watch this for one reason alone. Mm -hmm. In the original, the, the most iconic scene of Lady in the Trap is the spaghetti scene, where two dogs are sucking down the single strand of spaghetti. Now, in real life, it is impossible for a dog to suck down anything. Mm -hmm. If you feed a dog spaghetti, it's going to be like... Blah, 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 blah. So I want to see how they well, work around this uh, you know, complication with I think you'll be plan. surprised to know that... Uh, Computer-generated graphics have come a long way. Yeah, but like even just like picturing a dog going, a, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I don't believe it. Uh, one that uh, a live-action remake or whatever a version of a movie that will be hitting theaters though is their 101 Dalmatians live-action spinoff. Uh, this one focuses on the franchise's villain, Cruella Deville. If you put her last name together, it spells devil. She's a cruel devil. What? Uh, and uh, Cruella Deville will be played by Emma Stone. Oh. And not sure what to think of this one, other than we really couldn't care less about any of their recently announced live-action remakes and spin-offs. Cruella de Vil is young and attractive now. Yeah. There you go. I wanted to fuck Cruella de Vil before, <laughs> and nothing's changed. Yeah, Glenn Close, right? That was Glenn Close? Yeah. Very attractive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, a nice-looking lady. <laughs> Timeless. Ageless. <laughs> <laughs> On the Star Wars side of things, we, of course, got the first trailer for Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. Which, uh, yeah, we both refuse to watch it because going into it blind with no knowledge or anticipation, the way we like to experience movies that we're probably already going to see, especially Star Wars movies, which yes. you all insist on just ruining for yourselves. The less I know, the better. Yeah. Especially with stuff like this. Yeah. Uh, but the new lightsaber scene from the trailer was uh, completely unavoidable because it quickly spread across social media in GIF or GIF mm -hmm. form. Because, wow, it's a new lightsaber. It's like a switchblade. Yeah. But big. Wow. And bit totally realistic. Like, this is a design that absolutely makes sense. Just, you know, have a, just to have a, a second half of a lightsaber just flail off. No one's going to get hurt. The, the evolution of lightsabers is really, it's really come a long way, baby. Yeah. Because if you consider the prequels and then, and then the uh, four, five, and six, and then this, it's like, they're all over the place with these lightsaber designs. Yeah. I, I, the only thing left is like a f sort of floppy lightsaber. Woo. Yeah, a little fun one. Mm. Now, apologies in advance to everyone who is very excited for the continued evolution of this legendary piece of equipment. Not a real weapon, though. The lightsaber. But, uh, I mean, I think we probably peaked at Darth Maul's double-sided model. Pretty, pretty, pretty fucking cool, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And this new one, it's like his, but you see it has a hinge on it so you can look really cool opening it. Uh, when you chunk. inevitably buy the replica or toy version of it, people are going to fucking hurt themselves. Yeah. They're going to knock over I, furniture. I posted the tweet. I was like, it literally in instantly reminded me of when you like click down the stapler and start shooting staples around. Yeah. It's just like that. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the fact that this clip was spread so wide also potentially ruined the plot twist because that's Ray, but she's fighting for the dark side. Uh -oh. Cool. 
Yeah, Star Wars trailers have gained a reputation for being predictable with their misdirects, though. So maybe it's a trick. This could just be, uh, I don't know, a vision or something. Or, I mean, like, half the shit that was in the Rogue One trailer was not in that movie mm. at all. They, they know what they're doing with this. Uh, but what if they assumed that you would think it was a misdirect and she actually is fighting for the dark side, the old double switcheroo? Yeah, they're playing Uno cards that haven't been ex- invented yet. <laughs> Take that. Uh, also regarding Star Wars, they released a full trailer for The Mandalorian. The Mandalorian! There it is, which is the first major series to hit Disney Plus on launch day. It looks really good. I hate how good this looks. It features an incredibly impressive class uh, cast, including Pedro Pascal, Nick Nolte, Emily Swallow, Carl Weathers, yeah. Gina Carano, Taika Waititi, and fucking Warner Herzog. In, in a perfect role. He is a Star Wars character. Yeah. And then uh, I think Giancarlo Esposito's in it as well? Yeah. Weird. So, yeah, we're very, we're very interested in this one. It looks really good. I know. It's strange. I'm like, fuck, now I got to get this stupid Disney Plus thing. Isn't it odd that we were uh, not very excited about the actual movie that's coming yeah. out? And as soon hey, as The whatever. Mandalorian comes up, it's like, can't wait to see this. Yeah, I'll, I'll check it out. Yeah. Uh, they also announced that uh, Ewan McGregor will be reprising his role from the prequel films as Obi-Wan Kenobi for an upcoming series on that streaming platform. And that was confirming numerous rumors that have been popping up for months. So, you were right, internet sleuths. And to top all of that off, Disney, they're ready to lock you in for a full three years. What can we do to get you into this streaming service? Uh, They're going to give you a substantial discount on Disney Plus if you pay in advance for 36 months of service. Now, based on the monthly fee of $6.99 that was announced earlier this year, you would be paying around $250 total if you remained a subscriber for three years. But until September 2nd, Labor Day weekend sale, baby! Uh, Disney's offering three years of Disney Plus at a over $100 discount. So $140 for three years of Disney Plus. Set it and forget it. As long as you're not afraid of commitment and you're confident that you'll be using it frequently enough. But still, that's crazy. You you go to you have to sign up for a Disney fan account and then you can do it from there. I can't wait for the new uh, insufferable subculture that's going to rise from this. People with like bumper stickers like, I got the triannual pass. I'm a triannual pass holder. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I go to Disney every day after work. It's well, not weird. Those people that they're they're annual pass holders, like AP. Uh, they, they you see the bumper stickers all over. Once you once you notice them, you can't not notice them. Mm-hmm. And you're like, well, why are you out here? Why aren't you at Disneyland? My favorite one is the Mickey Mouse head with the Blue Lives Matter flag on it. <laughs> Love seeing those. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mickey, he does not kneel for the flag. No. Anyway, moving away from Disney now. Thank God. And over to DC. Oh, no. <laughs> that's <laughs> Although, typically what we would say. Yeah, yes. That's what we would normally say, yeah. but we are sure that you're well aware of this by now. But there's a new Joker trailer out, and it, I actually haven't seen it. I've seen but, it. Uh, I was actually excited to see it, and it's a second trailer. Yeah. But it was because I, I saw on Twitter that it didn't give away a whole bunch of stuff. So. I didn't care. I, after I watched the first teaser, I'm like, I'm going to see it. So Same. That's same, all I need. But I have, this, like, I have a weird curiosity with this movie where it's it's like... It's kind of exactly what I want DC to do in a weird mm. way, so I, yeah. I'm, ca- I'm like still like cautious about it. So I need to make sure. I feel like a manager, like managing this movie. Like, okay, let's except see. you have no actual control. Yeah, ag- exactly. You just want to feel like you're participating. Yeah, in exactly. That's nerd culture in a nutshell. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, now I know how you all feel. Yeah. You want to feel like you're you're uh, taking part in something, and I will be when you have no influence. Personally whatsoever. offended if it's terrible. Uh, yeah. Well, people are saying that it's doing a pretty good job of. Not giving away more than the original trailer, but it does give uh, a lot more proof that it's shaping up to at least look like an incredible, potentially Oscar-worthy performance from Joaquin Phoenix that will continue the upward trajectory, and the only the only way is up at this point yeah. of these DC films after a not so good, kind of embarrassing start. Yeah. The Joker hits theaters in just over one month on October 4th. May the 4th be with you. That's and, <laughs> okay. And speaking of DC movies that are most likely going to continue to turn these things around, uh, there was uh, pretty substantial recent news regarding that James Gunn, The Suicide Squad That's movie. how it's different. It's got the the in it. Looks like DC is pulling yet another very successful person that Marvel Studios uh, had over to their side because Deadline's reporting that Taika Waititi will be joining the cast for an unspecified role. Good for him. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, in addition to that, it was also recently announced that Nathan Fillion has signed on and that comedian Steve Agee, who's great, uh, has also joined. He's going to be playing the role of King Shark. So that's That's kind of odd (laughs) casting choice, but I like him a lot. 
Well, over on the Netflix side of things, it's been known for a little while now that we're going to be getting a Breaking Bad movie from series creator Vince Gilligan, starring Aaron Paul, and it's going to everyone's kind of known that it's going to take place immediately after the events of the season finale. But why is it Brian Cranston? Well, but the rumor is, it, is, is it that he he's the star be of the show? Why would it's going to be flashbacks? Why wouldn't the star of the show be in the movie? Don't spoil the last episode, Elliot. It's only been four like years. Six years. Four years. It's been a long time. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, last weekend it was not only confirmed that the movie has actually already been com- completed, they're yeah. done with it, uh, but Netflix also accidentally leaked the name of the film themselves when a temporary placeholder for the film started appearing on their platform. It's going to be called El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie. And just a few hours after that info started spreading, Netflix just went ahead and dropped the first teaser trailer for the film, and that features Skinny Pete being interrogated regarding the whereabouts of Jesse Pinkman. Uh, it's just a teaser, but... Yeah. Pretty exciting. I always liked Skinny Pete. Uh, You know, Breaking Bad was one of our favorite series of all time, so a continuation of that, as long as it doesn't completely retcon all of the events of the final season, will be great. People are like, the Brian Cranston thing, it's like, okay, well, yeah, if he came back in a flashback or something, like, that's fine. I think he might. uh, Anyways, there's, it's not long to wait. Uh, It also came with a premiere date, and that's October 11th for Netflix. And apparently it's going to air on AMC, but sometime on a later date, even though they technically own the show. Yeah, weird licensing agreement, but I'm glad they worked it out. Uh, AMC's got to be very happy with Netflix because they, I mean, even the creator, Vince Gilligan, said that Netflix saved that show from ending early. Well, yeah. And, like, Walking Dead, I don't know how much more that's got in it. Like, AMC, they... They're probably freaking out. A They're bit. starting a new uh, motorcycle gang show here in the next couple weeks. Uh, yeah, Mayans. Right. Yeah. Well, good luck. Yeah, it's like they just watered down everything that they did well. Yeah. Anyway, over in gaming news, uh, 2K Games is apparently just uh, throwing their hands up in the air and saying "fuck it," because despite the ever increasing scrutiny of surprise mechanics and loot boxes from regulatory bodies and gamers themselves. 2K has decided that these types of mechanics found in their basketball series NBA 2K hadn't yet gone far enough. So they just went ahead and straight up added a goddamn casino to their game. It's not gambling. <laughs> no, sir, that's clearly gambling. That's Those are games of chance that are on there. Uh, nah. No, this is a basketball game, sir. <laughs> uh, I love being gaslit by large company. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, their, in their most recent My Team trailer, the game shows off the card packs and stuff like that. But it also introduces pachinko and slot machines for some reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, to be fair, GTA Online also just added a casino to their game as well, but uh, at least they can attempt to have that make sense because casinos definitely exist here in Southern California. They're not very good, but they exist. Yeah, uh, It is odd to see it packed into a game where you should be playing basketball Focusing on the game. Yeah. Get your head in the game. Like, if you were at a casino as a basketball player, you would be fine and probably miss The some NBA games. Uh, famously, allegedly, had uh, some pretty serious problems with star players uh, racking up gambling debts in the like mid to late mm-hmm. 90s. Uh, just look up the Michael Jordan conspiracy theories. It's fascinating. If anything, they should <laughs> be adding mechanics where you can bet on the game itself. Yeah. Yeah. There's like, What's the over-under on this game I'm about to play? Yeah, on you guy spin a wheel, and it's like, are you going to get caught? Are you going to get caught? Mm-hmm. And then you get caught, and then like the commissioner has to come in, and he's like, oh, geez, you really fucked me this time. How about you uh, How about you? You say you're retiring, you go play fucking AAA baseball or some shit, yeah. we let this blow over for like a year, and then you're like, you know what, I'm coming back. And then, and then it's a triumphant moment. Yeah. That's why my favorite sports video game is Pete Rose Baseball. <laughs> you know, I think it's been long enough. Yeah, I know. We should let Pete Rose... Uh, but yeah, uh, let him go. Also, the decision to add slot machines to the game, that two k they kind of lost any footing that they had in the future to say that these types of mechanics aren't literally gambling because they're just being so blatant about it now. Yeah, hiding in plain sight. Wow. Uh, also in gaming, World of Warcraft Classic was released this week, and uh, the queue times are insane. I literally queued up to get into a server and carried out an entire day full of activities before getting home, cooking dinner, eating it, watching TV, and then sitting down with uh, another minute to do, to, or two to go to get in. I didn't have any problems. Well, so that's I the thing. got right in. Uh, Elliot has never, ever played World of Warcraft. Nope. Ever in his life, never, never had it. even the slightest desire. So what better place to start than World of Warcraft Classic? The original. And so I convinced Elliot to sign up, and we had a little stream the other day. If you missed it, sorry. Uh, I'll put a link. It's unlisted. We'll put a link yeah. in the description. But we played with Bruce Green yeah. of uh, Sabbatical Funhouse. 
Yeah. And uh, Elliot, I would like to hear your uh, uh, 15 years too late review of the original World of Warcraft. And we it, we uh, played for five or six hours, so this is a very educated review. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to be as nice as possible. Here. Yeah. Uh, I assumed that the game was not going to be something that was really for me, not something I would be into. And I was 100% correct at that. It is like all of like it is a bunch of very specific things that I dislike about gaming, just distilled into being the game. Just endless grind. Mm -hmm. uh, the graphics are hideous, but it's an old game. It's fine. They're not hideous. Uh, they're cartoony. Nah, it's ugly as hell. No, age ugly well. as sin. Uh, I do. I will say I understand like the social aspect of it. That I can see that being fun, you know, like gives gives you a reason to you know log on and hang out with your friends. And yeah, you go questing and shit. Fine, I get that. But no, it's it's just not for me. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, well we tried, <laughs> but he does have a level like seven or eight. So yeah, and I'm gonna be stuck uh, there for a while. I it, think another <laughs> another twelve, thirteen hours, you'd be able to go into some dungeons, and that's where the real game starts. I can't like the idea of actually logging on and playing by myself, like, without you or anyone I know on there with me. <laughs> I was just like, I, I just can't. I, I can't think of a single thing in the world that would motivate me to actually do that. Boredom. <laughs> but I have, like, fucking 50 games on my computer. I can play anything without play, paying $15 a month. Come on. All right. Well, finally, instead of trailers, here's something for you to watch that we highly suggest. Over on Newgrounds... What? One of the originators of online yeah. content... 120 animators came together to reanimate a classic episode of Courage the Cowardly Dog, and the results are incredible. Is this like Shrek retold? Uh, sort of. It's it's. This is full on quality from start to finish. It's, Damn. It's it's crazy. Even if you've never seen the show, this is worth a watch just to see all the uh, various styles and talents coming together to produce a seamless version of the episode, and it's a good episode too. It's really well done, so we highly suggest checking it out if you've got a couple minutes to spare. And you might even become a fan of Courage the Cowardly Dog, because... I don't think I ever watched that one. Oh, I loved it. So this was uh, this was a great thing to wake up to when I got the uh, news alert one morning. I, I, I have an RSS alert for Courage the Cowardly Dog news. I don't know. I, I think <laughs> I really did see it on my like Google News or something like that. Anyways, a link to that is down in the description below, as well as links to everything else that we talked about today. So be sure to check that out. In the meantime, though... Yeah, we did a you know our weekly podcast. We didn't do one last week. Sorry, sorry, but we did. We came back and did one this week. Elliot's been jumping in and out of the city for like yeah, three I'm, weeks I'm now. Going on a fucking car trip tomorrow. Uh, summer sucks. Yes. Cancel summer. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, if you're a patron member or a patron or a member, yeah. or would like to be, uh, it's five dollars and you get all our podcasts. And uh, please check that out. And also, episode of uh, Tech News Day we did this week about, you know what, what if we did nuke a hurricane? What would happen? Not saying the president did or didn't ask, but what, what would happen? What would happen? We looked we looked right into it. Yeah, and then uh, on Weekly Weird from last week, uh, you might want to check your local state or ordinances because you might be able to smoke weed legally. Yeah. So check out those episodes, and we'll see you guys very soon for a new episode of Weekly Weird coming right up. Bye-bye. <laughs>